What if computers didn't think with electricity, but with light? Engineers at the University of Pennsylvania just pulled off the impossible. They built the first programmable chip that can actually train artificial intelligence using light waves. It's called a silicon photonic chip, and it uses light to perform the complex math behind AI, all on a tiny mass-producible silicon platform. While many are left shocked, we're all left asking, how does it actually work? And why could this change AI forever? One thing you have to remember is that AI today is smarter than it's ever been, but it's also way hungrier. Training large-scale neural networks like the one behind generative artificial intelligence takes millions of kilowatt hours of energy. That's enough to power thousands of homes for an entire year as we push AI to become more human-like, more creative, more responsive, the price tag keeps going up in parallel. We're not just talking monetarily. We're talking time, heat, carbon emissions, and a whole lot of electricity. I am sure you're now wondering, what's the main driver of the problem? Well, we're still relying on the same old silicon chips. Chips designed for the digital world, not the neural world. See, AI works like a brain. It uses networks of artificial neurons that fire only when a certain threshold is reached. That's what enables the technology to think in layers. But that's a non-linear process, meaning tiny inputs can lead to huge, complex outputs. Okay, quick detour. Let's talk about non-linearity. It sounds complicated, but it's simple. Imagine rolling a ball across a flat surface. It goes exactly where you push it, right? That's linear. One input, one output. Classic. Now put that same ball on the tip of a hill. Just the tiniest nudge, boom. It rolls wildly in one direction. That's non-linear. Small input, big, unpredictable output. In AI, nonlinearity is what gives neural networks their power. Without it, adding layers does basically nothing. It's like stacking flat roads instead of hills. No change in direction, no learning. That's why training AI with light has been so hard. Light is great at linear stuff, but getting it to do nonlinear math, that's been the holy grail. Introducing Penn's breakthrough, it truly changes the game. Why? Because in AI, linear just doesn't cut it. You need complexity. You need a system that can respond to a noisy, unpredictable, and volatile inputs the way the human brain does. Nonlinearity is how neural networks make sense of patterns, language, images, and behaviors. Without it, AI can't learn anything truly useful. Optical chips have been around for decades. Some are even lightning fast, but they all hit a wall. Although they could perform simple calculations like addition and multiplication, they could not adapt, couldn't train, and certainly couldn't replicate the non-linear logic that defines intelligent systems. They were great at doing, but terrible at learning. That's what makes the chip from Penn a true game changer. For the first time, researchers have cracked the code for using light to perform non-linear computations, which we discussed is the primary enabler for deep learning. This isn't a faster calculator. It's a self-learning system built entirely on light that has indeed never been done before. How does it work, you ask? It all starts with a special class of synthetic materials, engineered at a scale smaller than the wavelength of light. These materials can manipulate light in ways that nature can't, bending it, twisting it, and reflecting it in extremely controlled patterns. When light passes through them, it doesn't just behave normally, it becomes programmable. Watch closely because this is where things get pretty exciting. The pen chip uses two separate beams of light to operate. The first beam, called the signal, carries the input data. The second beam is the pump. This beam shines into the material from a different angle, altering how the signal light is processed. That second beam doesn't just light up the chip, it programs it. Depending on how the pump beam is shaped, its intensity, direction, and pattern, it adapts how the material reacts to the signal beam. In other words, the material becomes a dynamic processor that evolves in real time. It can absorb, reflect, or amplify certain parts of the signal depending on how it's instructed by the pump beam. Now we know how it performs non-linear operations. To understand how ingenious this is, think of it like a maze. You send a light beam through a maze. Every time it hits a wall or takes the wrong turn, it wastes time. But now imagine that as the light moves through, the walls of the maze can shift guided by a second beam that watches what the first one is doing. Eventually, the maze reshapes itself to guide the light through the most efficient path. That's exactly how learning happens in this University of Pennsylvania chip. This feedback-based reconfiguration is what enables the chip to learn without traditional code or electronic circuits. It's not being manually reprogrammed with software. It's literally reshaping its own internal logic using light. That's what nonlinear optical computation looks like. Another way to put it, this chip turns physics into math. Instead of using transistors and logic gates to calculate equations, it uses the physical behavior of photons interacting with custom-designed nanomaterials to embody those equations. It becomes math. 
It's even more impressive when you understand that all of this happens with no electricity consumption in the computation process itself. There's still some power needed to control the pump beam and peripheral systems, but the core learning mechanism runs on pure photonics. That means it's not just fast, it's drastically more energy efficient than anything based on silicon. This opens the door to a completely new class of computing hardware. In the future, we could have systems that don't just use light for communication, like fiber optics, but use it as the fundamental medium for logic, learning, and decision making. That's a future where AI models could be trained exponentially faster and at a fraction of today's energy costs. We're talking about reducing the carbon footprint of machine learning, shrinking the size of data centers, and pushing AI capabilities even further. Because photonics can handle huge amounts of data in parallel, these systems could someday outperform today's most advanced GPUs, not just in speed, but in flexibility. And all of this comes from reshaping the flow of light. What the engineers at Penn have built isn't just an elaborate science project, it's a serious shot across the bow for traditional silicon chips. For decades, we've relied on chips that move electrons through tiny circuits to power everything, our phones, laptops, and even the supercomputers training today's massive AI models. But it seems it might be time to bid those chips goodbye. AI is growing fast, maybe even too fast, for society as well as the hardware we've been using. These models are bigger and need way more processing power. With that comes heat, high energy bills, and performance limits we're boarding against. Now with this new innovation from Penn, there might be a new wave of companies ditching electrons for light energy. Seriously. It's like swapping out a Maserati for a SpaceX rocket ship. The reason? Light moves faster than electricity. A lot faster. In a normal chip, data gets processed step by step. One clock tick at a time. It's orderly but slow. Penn's chip works uniquely. It uses a method called computation by propagation, which basically means it does the math as the light moves through it. No waiting, no clock. The math happens on the fly, like solving a Rubik's cube while tossing it through the air. A testament to this is the fact that this new chip classified an image in half a nanosecond. That's faster than traditional chips can even begin a single step of a calculation. It's not just faster, it's operating on a totally different scale. But speed isn't the only superpower here. Traditionally, GPUs often run hot and cooling them takes even more energy. It's inefficient and expensive. Light doesn't have that problem. Photons don't bump into things or lose energy the way electrons do. They don't heat up the chip and they need less power to control. Penn's chip only needs an extremely low amount of energy to power the optical system and it stays cool the whole time. No fans, no coolant, just light doing its thing. That's huge. Data centers today spend around 40% of their power just on cooling. Imagine cutting that number in half. We're talking about greener, cheaper AI that doesn't come with a massive carbon footprint, and it gets better. Because this chip stays cool, you don't need to space out components or build bulky heat sinks. That means you can pack more computing power into a smaller space. Penn's design is super compact. It reshapes silicon at the nanoscale to control how light travels through it. No fancy materials, no custom factories, just innovative engineering. If you need more power, add more optical layers, Want to shrink it down for a drone or a satellite? You can. This tech isn't just for massive servers. It could bring real AI into tiny devices, right at the edge of the network. The chip processes data in real time without storing it in memory, so there's nothing to steal. As one of the engineers said, no one can hack into a non-existing memory. That's not just clever. It's potentially revolutionary for data security. I know this is thrilling and I don't want to dampen the excitement, but there are still some challenges to call out. Because as groundbreaking as Penn's light-powered chip is, it's important to understand the limitations that still surround it. Like any early-stage technology, there's a long road between a scientific breakthrough and widespread adoption. The chip represents a remarkable step forward, but there is additional testing and innovation required before commercial adoption. Scaling this technology to handle the billions of parameters used in modern neural networks is a different challenge altogether. It will require rethinking how we route data, optimize training processes, and build software that can take advantage of fundamentally different hardware? Penn researchers acknowledge that we're still in the foundational phase. The chip's ability to classify data at the speed of light is extraordinary, but it's not yet capable of running end-to-end -end AI systems or supporting real-time interactive applications. For now, the focus is on demonstrating functionality, solving the benchmark AI problem, refining materials, and exploring how far this photonic approach can go under lab testing conditions. The second challenge is compatibility. While the chip uses silicon and can be manufactured using existing commercial processes, that doesn't mean it's ready to be dropped into a laptop or server. The entire architecture of modern computing from CPUs and GPUs to memory management, operating systems, and even programming languages is designed for electrical processing. 
To fully harness this chip's capabilities, we'd need a fundamental rethinking of how computers are built. That includes everything from the hardware layer up to the software stack. It's not enough to replace one chip, you would need new buses to handle optical signals, new memory interfaces that can sync with photonic processing, and new compilers or frameworks that can instruct light-based systems on how to learn. There are also ecosystem gaps to contend with. Photonic computing is still a niche field. Tool chains are limited, debugging is harder, and few commercial developers know how to write code for light-based logic. Without broader industry support and development frameworks, integration will remain a problem. Another point to consider is hybridization. For the foreseeable future, light-based chips will likely work alongside silicon, not replace it entirely. Integrating the two optical systems that compute and electrical systems that store, manage, and distribute data will require complex interface designs that haven't been fully developed yet. The question of generalizability remains open. Can the pen chip handle the variety of non-linearities required by different AI models? Can it adapt fast enough to the evolving architectures of machine learning, shifting rapidly each year? While we all can agree that the future looks promising, it's unclear how flexible the system will be at larger scales or in real-world training environments. What pen engineers have created is nothing short of visionary, a computing platform that uses light to think and does so in a way that's compact, energy efficient, and insanely fast. But just as the first transistor in 1947 didn't immediately lead to the iPhone, this photonic chip is the start of a journey. If this technology evolves, as hoped, we could one day train powerful AI models at the speed of light, without the power bills, heat sinks, or data breaches of the past. Let's imagine that we can actually adopt this new innovation that uses light instead of electricity. No overheating, no power-hungry fans, just pure speed. That means we could shrink entire AI labs down to the size of a shoebox, or run them inside drones, satellites, even smart glasses. That's one colossal win. AI gets smaller, lighter, and more mobile. Now zoom out. If you scale this tech across an entire data center, suddenly you've got an AI supercomputer that doesn't guzzle energy or need constant upgrades. This isn't just about devices. It accelerates the pace of progress. If we can train models in seconds instead of days, ideas won't take months to test. Researchers could build, learn, and iterate at light speed, literally. We could be at the brink of AI innovation accelerating like never before. Sure, we're not there yet. But what we're seeing at Penn is the first spark of something massive. And this is just the beginning. The future of AI isn't just about running faster. It's about running cooler, smarter, and cleaner, powered by light. What the team at Penn has built isn't just a breakthrough. It's a sneak peek at what's coming next. So here's the big question. What happens when light becomes the brain behind the machine? We're on the edge of finding out. If you want more cutting edge science and technology innovation stories, don't forget to like, share, and follow. Comment, what would you build with a chip that thinks at the speed of light? And don't hesitate to give a suggestion for our next video. Thanks for watching, stay blessed, and stay curious.